Since its early days as an electronics manufacturer, South Africa's Altron has transformed itself into an IT and telecommunications company with an international presence. Lerato Mbele Roberts sat down with the company's chief executive, Mteto Nyati, to find out how Africa can position itself to take advantage of the world's digital revolution. We have been around for 54 years and we have done well over the last 54 years. But if you look back five years ago, we started to experience challenges in the manufacturing space. And the question is, how did we get, get in that space in the first place? Uh, we got in there largely because of the international sanctions that were put on South Africa. And it made a lot of sense for us to substitute uh, the international companies as they were leaving South Africa. Sanctions under apartheid? Under apartheid, yes, that was it. But then in 1994, the, the sanctions uh, were lifted and companies or customers in South Africa started to have an option. They could buy locally or they could buy globally. And if you look, our scale, we did not have enough scale. When globally, our competitors were producing stuff for the whole world, so it just did not make sense for us to continue to be in that space. So clearly market forces have literally forced you to reevaluate the strategy and position of the company. But that shift from producing hardware electronics to software, was it natural progression? It was a natural progression for us. We came up with a technology that does stolen vehicle recovery. That's all software that we came up with from South Africa. And so we have the skills to do this, but what we lack is the scale when it comes to manufacturing. So there's two situations underway. We have manufacturing in decline in South Africa, and in the rest of the African continent, we have manufacturing that really never took off. So as we plot the future of the African continent where everybody wants to see some level of industrialization. What does that future look like? You know, I think as a, as a continent, we need, to, we need to try and understand our reality and also understand the things that we are good at and, and also what I would call our comparative advantage. Uh, right now, I would say when I look at China and I also look at South, uh, Southeast Asian countries, those are countries that are better placed to be doing manufacturing. You need the entire ecosystem to support what you're doing. You know, when you are sitting in, the, in, in Africa and the rest of the components and everything is being done elsewhere, just moving those components to you, it adds cost. So we need to understand those dynamics and say, what is it that we can be good at? We can be good in terms of tourism, you know? That is a space we have land. We can position ourselves as a, as a continent that provides food to the rest of the world. Why not, you know? In there, there is technology that can be used to do things efficiently. We apply the fourth industrial revolution in terms of these new areas. I'm glad you've referenced the fourth industrial revolution because it's become very much a catchphrase. Where does Africa fit on the continuum of the fourth industrial revolution? Uh, firstly, uh, a number of companies have invested significantly in terms of mobile telecommunication services throughout Africa, which means the citizens of Africa are able to connect with the rest of the world. So that's one aspect. The other piece is that global cloud service providers like Microsoft, like Amazon Web Services, like Huawei, they have made decisions. Now we are part of this global network. Many of our young people are already what I would call digital you know, citizens. They, they, they have been born in this space. They are comfortable with technology. They are coming up with applications and software that address the problems around them. So we have the necessary, uh, I would say, ingredients for us to be effective player in this fourth industrial revolution. What do you make of African leaders who are obsessed with this idea of creating African industrialists? That there's got to be more than Aliko Dangote 
producing things on a mass scale? It's unfortunate that most of our leaders in Africa, they are 60 years plus, they cannot connect to this fourth industrial revolution thing. They talk it, but they just do not get it. You know, uh, we need to move beyond manufacturing in Africa. We need to get into this new world, new world of fourth industrial revolution, where we are leveraging artificial intelligence, where we are using the cloud services that we have here to address the challenges that are facing uh, our continent. This is a company born in South Africa, it's become global and now operates in diverse markets from India to the UK to Australia. What are the things you've observed and the lessons you've learned in business? The first one really is the transition from the founder to the next generation. It's not the, always the easiest. And the other thing is a company like ours is a company that is largely made of, out of engineers. You know? We, we develop things. We are passionate about the, the developing those things. The problem with that is that we tend to be so focused on the products that we are developing and not pay enough attention to what the customers are truly looking for. We need to be solving customers' problems. So collaboration and innovation work hand in hand. And it's something that needs to be part and parcel of the DNA of the company has driven through values. So there's, there's value in values.